these pillars are of different shapes and sizes. If we simply apply a for loop, the sizes of the shattered pieces will differ greatly. So we'd better classify them. Here I classify them according to their shapes. The above pillars are long and thin, while the below ones are short and thick. Let me explain it in detail. Say we've got a relatively flat object, measure its volume and its area. Convert these attributes from primitive class to detail. And then we get a sum of its area and volume. Keeping the same area, create a sphere, which has the largest volume in all shapes. Now keep the same volume, create another sphere. It looks much smaller than the previous one. Let's make the flat object thinner. Then its area is just a bit smaller, whereas its volume is much smaller. See how the spheres change. This sphere has the same surface area with a flat object, and this one has the same volume. Obviously, their radii are different. You may have noticed when I change the skill on the y-axis, the ratio of the radii of these two spheres changes accordingly. The flatter the object, the greater the difference between the sphere's radii. Say the object is not a flat, but a cube. Then the sphere of the same area turns out to be like this. And the sphere of the same volume ends up like this. It can be seen that their radii are almost the same. Let's make it a sphere. Now these two spheres are of the same radius. That is, the ratio of the radii is 1. Briefly, the ratio of the radii of these two spheres reflects how flat the object is. Here are the formulas for calculating the volume and area of a sphere. Because Houdini has worked out the volume and area, we only need the ratio of the radii to know how flat the object is. So let's calculate the radii. Okay, this is how to get the radius of a sphere by a given volume. If we transfer it to an expression in Houdini, it's like this. Note that it's 1.0 slash 3 rather than 1 slash 3. If you omit point 0, the result will be an integer, 0, which is wrong. Of course, you can also calculate the radius by a given area. With the above explanation, I believe you can understand the expressions here. This is how to find the ratio of the two radii. But it's currently in the detail class. Since the ratio of the radii is calculated in the primitive class, we need to convert the area and volume from detail to primitive. Set promotion mode back to its default. Here is the ratio. Let's lower the value on the y-axis. See, the flatter the object, the larger the ratio is. So we can use the ratio to determine the object's flatness. Say there are many objects and you want to calculate them together, then you'll need a for each for this process. But here it's been converted to detail, so all objects will be processed as a whole, and the result will be wrong. Here I used another way. I didn't use attribute promote, but calculated the ratios directly in the primitive class. Create the name attribute for each connected piece then measure the volume and the area for each piece. Put expressions here as explained above. If it is a bit complicated for you, you may try group these pillars as per their areas. 
at a connectivity node. Then measure the area of each connected piece. This way we can split it to different types of pillars based on their areas. So all rows lead row. 